Hello, hello, hello. Happy November 1st. I'm your host. <laughs> do I do it again? Alexa Nicholas. Welcome to Eat Predators Daily. How is everyone doing? How is everyone's Halloween? What's going on? What did everyone dress as? You know, to be honest, I I didn't really celebrate Halloween before the kids were born. And now, obviously, I, I, I have to. <laughs> so we went trick-or-treating last night, and it was so, so much fun. It was Truths, my son's first Halloween. Um, he's almost three months old, and he was a little baby bat. <laughs> I just like wanted to find the easiest costume that was like a onesie, basically. It was like a onesie. You can like easily change him. And then it had little bat wings. And then like the hoodie was little bat ears. It was so cute. Hey! Hi, everybody. Hi, mom. I see my mom's here. I see Melanie's here with bubblegum bite, which we'll talk about um, in a little bit. So happy to see everyone. I saw that there's two new. Let me go up. Obviously, welcome Bubblegum Bite, Melanie, <laughs> to Chef's Kiss. I'm so glad you joined because I want your voice in the um, book club so badly. Um, and also, Molly, welcome to Chef's Kiss as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me see what the chat's saying. See how everyone's doing. Yeah, no, trick or treat. Nova scored a whole bunch of candy. And to be honest with you, she just wanted to play with the candy. She's like took it all out and then just wanted to count them all and play with them, which was kind of rad. So she didn't really eat that much candy on Halloween, which was pretty funny. How long is my favorite anniversary of our civil partnership? Three years ago, 15 years together. <gasps> Becca, that's amazing. 15 years together. That's inspirational. That's amazing. That's truly amazing. Yeah, Nova and Nova was a skeleton. Nova's Nova's the best. She's, you know, I'm not like deep in astrology, but she's a Scorpio, and everyone always tells me she's like definitely a Scorpio. She has like the little stinger. She is. I love my Nova. I love, love, love my my sweet Nova. I know I'm ready to dive in today too. Woo! What a you know. Obviously tomorrow I do want to say that I will be diving into Kesha. Sadly, um, she is performing. I don't want to get into it today because I actually need some time to like, you know, ease into it. But she is performing with my abuser. Um, and yeah, and she's also performing with another well-known uh, alleged, you know, you know the deal. So we'll get into that tomorrow. I'm going to be doing an open letter to her. Um, oh, my God. Welcome, Lucas. Welcome to Chef's Kiss. Um, oh, that made me so happy. Oh, and, and Mick, I would like to have you on my YouTube. Um, Miko, can we check and see if Mick has messaged us on the ePredators DMs? Mick, let me know if you've messaged us because I'll, I'll look into that. So, yeah, so Kesha, you know, is very, very disappointing, obviously, as a survivor. Um, I support Kesha. I have been supporting Kesha since the beginning of her justice movement. Um, and it's just honestly heartbreaking and um, a little triggering, not a little, but a lot. So I won't be going into that today because I have Nick Carter planned for today. But tomorrow we'll go into all of the details um, and I will be presenting my open letter to her. And I'm just hoping that she listens to it like heart to heart and that she understands uh, where I'm coming from. And she understands also the evidence that I have given to the public and the lawsuit, etc. And I'm just hoping that she hears me and also hears uh, the other survivors as well and uh, makes an, an informed decision because I just want to make sure that the decision she is making is informed and you know that 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 is extremely important because it's very heartbreaking I can't even stand most of today's music but give me the <laughs> Josh yeah I mean to be honest with you I'm, I'm kind of an oldie as well I still listen to the same albums I've been listening to for like the last 10 years so um I'm with you right there. But yeah, so, so 
we'll get into that tomorrow. Today is obviously Nick Carter. We're going to be digesting Nick Carter. It's about time. I wanted to do this early on, um, but I wasn't able to. And so now I want to get into it. And before we do, I do just want to say that this Sunday, I'm really excited to see all the members because we're going to be doing, uh, if you haven't gotten the book yet, try to get it as soon as possible. It's Social Change Now, a guide for reflection and connection. And we're going to go through the workbook and we're going to figure out um, our unique personalities, our unique creativity, our unique talent, and how we can engage in social change, um, which I'm super, this is like one of my favorite. I'm so excited to do this with you guys. I'm going to be doing the questions over the weekend. If you guys want to like start with me as well before we actually do the live on Sunday, feel free. It starts with the time is now and it goes into um, the questions and we do a little bit of journaling. And so I'm going to do mine on Saturday and I think later on Friday. So if you want to do some of them before we meet up on Sunday, feel free to do. But this will be our first weekend doing this. And I'm super, super, super excited to do this with all of you. I really, really cannot wait. And then obviously next Sunday we dive back into Britney Spears, The Woman in Me. So I am so excited. Thank you for everyone who has been joining the book club on Discord. Please, please make sure... Um, that you set up your Discord link because I'm setting up the audio so that we can talk with one another, like actually talk with one another and not even just in the comment section, but to also be able to talk with one another in with, with audio. Um, and it was so healing. I don't know if anyone is in here that joined us last weekend, but it was so healing. We talked about how survivors are um, can be at least cycle breakers, and it was such a beautiful discussion about Britney Spears' book. And so, obviously, I cannot wait to see you guys again the following Sunday. And just wanted to remind you guys that these are the two that we're currently doing. And then we're going to be moving on to another one after, um, after Britney. Okay. So now that we went into that, now that we went into that, what's everyone saying? That's all you can do, Alexa, just inform her. Yeah. I feel like all I can do is inform. And then she can make an informed um, decision on her own. And um, I'm hoping that she has empathy. You know, she is a survivor herself, and I have hope, at least, that she will have compassion and empathy for me and other survivors as well. And so before we go into it, you guys know the spiel. Um, E-Predators does not have a sponsor for the show. And so ways that we um, make this sustainable... One of them being through the, the through the merch at epredators.com. We have a bunch of fun t-shirts, um, a great way to like spread the word and also maybe meet someone through the messaging and have a conversation with them and spread awareness. Um, we still have the Scientology t-shirt, which all the proceeds go towards the Aftermath Foundation, which helps people escape Scientology. And, you know, I keep saying my favorite. Oh, we also have the Zoe 101. I don't know if anyone. We also have the Zoe 101 Pacific Coast Academy um, joke where we made it Eat Predators Academy. Um, and then my favorite one, I just say it over and over again, is the Power to Survivors tote. Um, because that's really uh, what keeps me motivated is trying to give back the power to survivors and also to give back the power to myself as a survivor. And so, yeah, so that is one of my, my favorites. And then if you're like, you know what, I don't want any merch, all good, all good. A great way to help, though, the activism and the artivism for Eat Predators is the Patreon. The Patreon goes towards our protesting um, institutions that are covering up SA and also um, the alleged predators themselves. And it goes towards the graphic design, et cetera, for the protest signs. And so, yeah, if you just want to support just like strictly the activism and artivism aspect of Eat Predators, that is a um, wonderful way to to do that. And, you know, I've dedicated my my life to this work. And so, you know, I'm doing this around the clock other than being a mom, obviously, and a human being. But I have dedicated my life to this and to make it sustainable. You know, I do need community. And so membership as well is also a great way um, from YouTube, oh, get out of here, um, to, to help support the mission. And so, yeah, so membership, 
We got the Chef's Kiss, which is the book club for Britney Spears, um, Munchies, and then we got the dinner party as well. And I think all member tiers, yeah, definitely all member tiers were doing the um, Social Change Now workbook. So everyone gets access to that, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. And then Britney Spears is strictly uh, the Chef's Kiss. And so any way that you feel um, best for you to support um, everything. Oh, wow. My abuser is actually poking out behind me. That was like kind of freaking me out. I like saw that. Oh, okay. Just stay there. It was like kind of scary. Um, actually, that's the person that Kesha um, is sadly uh, performing with um, alongside another alleged predator. So anyways, before we go into it today, I just want to um, set some guidelines. Please be respectful to each other in the comment section. Um, you might be a fan of Nick Carter watching, and I, I would like to say a message to uh, the fans out there um, of Nick Carter. Fandom, fandom specifically, can be harmful to survivors that are coming forward about their, uh, about their alleged, you know, predator. So even though you have um, your own perspective about someone that you don't know personally, that is not a family member, that is not your best friend, just to remind you about that, you might have your own perspective and be mindful of your perspective because how we treat survivors coming forward in extreme power imbalances, like power dynamic imbalances, um, it, it, it speaks to them you know these survivors are hearing you they're they're sadly getting sent your comments they're sadly getting sent so many different things um, that can make them feel that their voice doesn't matter that can make them feel that they're not believed they're not supported in any way and it's detrimental it is detrimental. There have been so many survivors out there that have dropped their cases um, due to the overwhelming um, online harassment that has happened. And so your perspective, you can have your perspective. No one, no one can force you out of your perspective, but it's all about being mindful about who's listening, right? And to remember, to always, always, always remember that these survivors are human beings. And since a lot of these fandom accounts, et cetera, like to say that they weren't there, so they don't know, well, then you don't know, right? Um, and if you're going to claim neutrality, which I'm never really necessarily a fan of because I don't think there is um, neutral on a moving train, but if you're going to claim that you're, you know, you're neutral or you're waiting and seeing, um, well, then I don't understand why sometimes a lot of the fandom, fandom seems to be leaning towards the person who is being accused um, of, of crimes, right, of harm towards others. And so if you're a culture of wait and see, then I would like you to stay in the wait and see um, seat so that you are not silencing any survivors that not only have come forward, but future survivors that are thinking about coming forward, that you don't silence their voices as well because they get scared out of coming forward, out of fear of harassment. And that is what survivors deal with day in and day out is not being believed, being hu publicly humiliated, especially when it's a public figure. And if they're in a small town, it's the same thing. I've read many DMs about it. So let's be mindful, right? I, I loved your Halloween costume, Promising Young Woman, saw it in theaters. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Peyton. Yeah, I thought it was fitting, right? I thought it was fitting to be Promising Young Woman. I was, honestly, when I saw that film, kind of changed my life, to be quite honest with you. It really inspired me to create Eat Predators. And so, yeah, I felt like it was fitting to be Promising Young. And when I saw the costume online, I was like, perfect. Um, so yeah, that's that was my costume this year. And also I, I dress up obviously for our last live, last, um, was it last week? God, I'm like losing track of days. So yeah, going in, guidelines, we got it. 
respectful of survivors, even when we have our own perspectives, right? And this is a platform to um, respect one another and to um, discuss and digest um, these uh, alleged predators. So let's let's get into it. Let's 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 get into it. Oh, before I do, I do want to just show everybody. Bubblegum Bite, my friend Melanie, who has been such an incredible ally for survivors, has showed up to countless protests for survivors. Um, she is kind of streamlining the and headlining uh, the Justice for Britney movement. She's been going to all of the hearings, um, and she's just so, so incredible, and she just started a YouTube channel, and so please go over and subscribe to her channel. Um, also watch her content. She is getting all the court hearings when it comes to Britney Spears and breaking it all down, and she's so awesome, dedicated ally, um, such a great advocate, and so please go check out her channel, and um, subscribe, like, and watch the recent video about Jamie Spears' lawyer's past. It's not so good, but it might be what we expect, right? So definitely go check it out. Melanie, Melanie, thank you for all that you do with Eat Predators. Um, I love you dearly. And so I just wanted to uh, to give that, give that shout out because she's amazing. Okay, so Nick Carter. Let's just go back a little bit. So Nick Carter for me, I you know, sadly, I wasn't really into boy bands. I was a strict Britney Spears fan. I was also um, a fan of like Destiny's Child, but I wasn't that into boy bands. But when it did come to boy bands, I was sadly an NSYNC fan. <laughs> so, and obviously not anymore after reading about uh, Justin Timberlake's uh, past with Britney Spears. It, it um, didn't really sit well with me. Um, but Backstreet Boys, I was not a a fan of I only knew the bye 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 uh song um that's the only one that I can think of and I knew about Nick Carter because I have a personal um story about Aaron Carter and I never talked about this before but I don't know how many years older Aaron Carter was than me and I you know Aaron Carter apparently has been um an ally for um, the survivors that have come forward with their allegations against Nick Carter. And sadly, um, he has now passed away. And, um, you know, rest in peace, you know, Aaron Carter. And so I was in this film called Moto X Kids. I don't know if anyone saw it. Wasn't that uh, great. It was literally a film where this like monkey ends up, uh, taking over one of our teammates because he gets his arm broken. It's a ridiculous film. But anyways, Moto X Kids. I think I was, this must have been before Zoe 101. So I might have been like 11 or 12. And it was my first like real red carpet event. And it was for the premiere of Moto X Kids. And I went to the premiere and Aaron Carter was there. And at the end of it, um, a kind of weird thing happened. I, I do remember him like scooping me to like give me a hug and he like kissed me, you know, but not like a friend kiss, like a, you know, like a, a kiss kiss. Um, and I was so, you know, I was like 12, 11 or 12, you know, and I was totally like confused and a little and definitely startled by it. Um, and, you know, now. I've read up a little bit about Aaron Carter's past um, with his family, and we talk about this a lot on Eat Predators, is um, the cycle, right? The cycle of abuse, and um, some survivors can recycle their trauma, right, towards others, and then there's survivors that have the chance to be cycle breakers, and that's what I really want to encourage um, survivors out there to feel empowered by the fact that even if they're not coming forward publicly or they're not able to etc the ways in which we process our trauma can actually um, save lives in the future and we are able to break that cycle break that cycle of abuse and sadly so many people that have abused individuals have been abused themselves and it's this constant cycle right 
It's this constant cycle. And um, survivors do have the chance to be cycle breakers. And um, but at, reading about Aaron Carter, I was so sad to hear about his family. And um, it was heartbreaking, honestly. And, you know, even though that thing happened, I, I honestly don't even know our age difference. Um, but that was my encounter, right, with Aaron Carter. And then now, you know, fast forward, learning about Nick Carter, um, I'm like, oh, to me, Nick Carter is Aaron Carter's brother. <laughs> like, I see Aaron, Nick Carter. I know, like, that's, like, the opposite for some people. But literally, Nick Carter is Aaron Carter's um, brother to me. And so, anyways, I just want to say rest in peace, Aaron Carter, um, and moving forward into Nick Carter. And so, oh, I didn't pull this up, but I, in January, I think it was, I went to um, the Grammys um, for a nonprofit, and we did a speech for press um, about survivors of the music industry. You can Google it, like Alexa Nicholas, like I think it was Hollywood Reporter, um, Grammys, and Melissa Schumann was there. And Melissa Schumann is one of the survivors who has come forward with her allegations against Nick Carter. And I got to meet Melissa Schumann. And am I getting this proper? Please tell me that I'm I'm getting this um, proper, her last name. Yeah, okay, yeah. And Melissa. So Melissa is... Um, was a pop singer in a band called Dream. I don't know if any um, of the millennials out there watching remember Dream, but I loved Dream growing up. And um, so, yeah, so I got to meet Melissa and she said her speech in front of press and I was crying. You can literally see the footage online. Like I was legit crying behind her, listening to her speak um, about what she said happened to her um, by Nick Carter. And I mean, it was heartbreaking, right? And I'm coming to all of this as a survivor, right? I'm, I've been through it. I've been through it. I've been through the litigation aspect. I've been through the media aspect. I've been through it all, right? And so when I'm discussing these matters, it's coming from a survivor perspective, which I'm sure um, a lot of the um, ones that have been accused of these crimes um, don't really like me that much because um, I I have my perspective and I've been through all of the layers of it. And listening to Melissa Schumann's words, right, her own words, just like we are now getting to hear Britney Spears' own words, right? Right. Um, hearing that in person, it, it 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 sent chills down my spine. I was very emotional and I felt all of her feelings, her sadness, her anger, all of it. Um, and so, yeah. And it's and same thing happened when I watched the sad, sad, sad public um, press junket with um, with Shay, you know, uh, another survivor with allegations against Nick Carter. It was heartbreaking. You know, something I really pray for the world, right, is when we are listening to survivors come forward, feel them. It's not hard to. It's not hard to feel the humanity of survivors, right? Um, you can hear them. You can feel them. You can feel their tears. You can feel their heartbreak. You can feel their anger. And then most of the time we hear the words of the alleged predators through their lawyers, right? Which are very cold. Um, sometimes it feels not human, um, defensive, uh, sometimes defamatory, and also full of blame, right? And scapegoating. And um, yeah, I, I just want to say this before going in is it's really important. Melissa did actually you know publicly step forward and say her own words in a video so you know check out the Jeff Anderson video um, or find it on Hollywood Reporter and listen to Shay's words um, how brave are these survivors to not hide behind their lawyers right which most of the time they want survivors to be very very afraid of the ones that they are coming up against um, there is this silent fear. There is this felt fear um, that they want us to feel. 
And to be honest, like these survivors are so brave. They're showing their faces. They're telling their stories. They're showing their pain with the world. They're showing their triggers and their anger. And whenever I really try to find the alleged predator uh, saying something, right, um, in response to these allegations, um, I always find them uh, behind behind their lawyers. And they're these um, typical uh, lawyer um, responses that have been borrowed from the last person, the last person before that that has been accused. And um, it's just uh, recycling um, these these responses that just don't feel, uh, in my opinion, the same as when a survivor comes forward and tells the world their trauma. Pluto, welcome to the dinner party. Thank you so much, Pluto. Thank you so much for joining. Um, you know what I mean? And so, you know, a lot of my uh, intentions with e-predators is to try and um, express that um, and have the public understand that it's, it's not too hard to go and listen to the survivor's detailed account, their allegations, right? And then go and listen to the alleged predator's response to those um, allegations. And just as a human, feel with your heart and maybe even close your eyes and, and listen to them too. Because um, in my opinion, I always feel something different. Um, it's like Britney Spears now, right? A long, t long time ago, you know, the media was running her life. Um, being able to tell the public how to feel about her, what to think of her, and what to talk about her. Um, and now we're hearing Britney Spears say it in her own words. And it, it, it has a huge impact. It has a huge impact because I feel this person here, right? I didn't feel the tabloids. I don't feel the tabloids at all. Um, you can tell what the tabloids are doing. You can get the agenda. You get the intention of tabloids, right? You get it. Um, and I do want to compare that a little bit because, you know, lawyers do what they do um, and tabloids do what they do. And so it's very important for us to understand intentions um, behind these things and to make our own informed decisions about how we want to feel the words from the survivor and from the alleged um, predator. So... That's all I'm saying going into it. And then um, let's digest. Nick Carter. Here he is. All right. This is um, an article from Vulture. On August 28th, a woman identified in court papers as AR filed a lawsuit against Nick Carter, alleging that the Backstreet Boys singer had essayed her multiple, multiple times starting when she was 15. Oh my God. Welcome to the dinner party. Lumar, welcome to the dinner party. Thank you so much for joining. Um, time starting when she was 15. AR's civil case filed in the Las Vegas court marks the third, the third lawsuit against Carter alleging SA or assault. In April, 2023, actor and dream singer, Melissa Schumann, sued Carter, accusing him of S.A. in harassment. This case was preceded by Shannon, Shay, Ruth's lawsuit in December 2022, accusing Carter of forced S. when she was only 17. I do want to remind somebody, um, everyone of something. So um, last year in the state of California, um, and, well, no, the year before that, a bill passed that it opened up the child SA cases for, um, opened up the statute for them. And so I'm pretty positive that Shay, the, um, the one who came forward against Nick Carter, um, she was doing it right before that window closed. Because if it says December, let me just double check there, right? Yeah, December. So right at the end of December, that window closed. And so that would have been the end for Shay, right? That would have been the end for um, her to be able to legally come forward. Um, same came for me with, with my abuser against Michael Milos. Um, I was able to seek justice in a civil suit due to that statute um, 
being opened up. And so it's very interesting. Just remember, like, it's so interesting to me as a survivor um, that she she came forward right before, you know, that window closed. And so to me, I'm not going to speak for Shay, um, but to me, it feels like, you know, you're like, should I do it? I mean, this is scary going up some going up against someone like Nick Carter. I mean, fucking terrifying, fucking terrified. Th- like, think about that, that the power imbalance there. Think about that. Um, and so it makes sense that it was right before that window, boom, closed um, as a survivor. So right there, that's something I noticed. And so I just wanted to let everybody know about that statute and um, the history behind it uh, before moving forward. OK, so let's continue. As the chorus of allegations against Carter grows louder, he has continued to deny accusations of wrongdoing and framed the accusers as colluding against him. Okay, so I guess it's um, the conspiracy theory thing. Uh, does everyone remember what we were talking about the last couple weeks about, about conspiracies and that whole, um, that whole conversation? Let me know in the comments if you guys remember what I'm talking about. Okay, so following AR's complaint, one of Carter's attorneys, Dale Hayes Jr., told the Daily Mail, Nick is looking forward to the evidence being presented and the truth about these malicious schemes coming to light. Yeah, I mean, you know, okay. So here's the lawyer talk. I, 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 I Is Nick Carter available? <laughs> um, I just, I'm like just curious because there's always their lawyers commenting. Uh, adding to the legal drama, Carter has sued Ruth and Schumann alleging conspiracy. Oh, shit. Okay. So who remembers Russell Brand? <laughs> you know, Nick Carter and Russell Brand are two separate individuals. We all know that for sure. They're obviously not like combined souls. Um, but who, who remembers the whole Russell Brand situation? Because what I remember about Russell Brand was when that documentary was made with all the allegations against him, um, he uh, claimed that it was a conspiracy theory. And so, you know, something I like to tell um, survivors that I talk to that have been experiencing this, this is a very new um, experience for survivors where at first survivors were hoping and praying on their knees almost that another survivor sadly this is a sad reality right for survivors very very sad reality um but kind of praying and hoping right that there was maybe another survivor out there um that could um join them on their road to justice because unfortunately for survivors when you are the only one um going up against someone who's extremely powerful right or even just going up against anybody one as one um you 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 get the whole well he or she or they like haven't done this you know to to anyone else but you so is this actually a problem and is this a is this believable or is it that bad um and so when I came forward, so many people, so many people, media outlets, et cetera, um, would ask me, are there more? Are there more victims? I, and I, you know, my first response was, I fucking hope not. I hope that this didn't happen to more people. And second, that is why I'm coming forward about this so this doesn't happen, you know, to anyone else. It's a public safety protocol to come forward as a survivor because it's an altruistic act. It's this balancing act between your own justice and then making sure that you're protecting others, making sure that you're protecting people or at least letting them know before they engage with that individual that this is a possibility, right? that they have done this before. Um, and so I just heard it time and time again. And now, fast forward. Um, now it seems like when there, when there is more, and there are more than one person coming forward, the new thing is, um, you know, hi, Mila, welcome to the dinner party. And this is in my own opinion, right? Um, and this is just from what I've been seeing and, and um and witnessing as a survivor, um, the new trend, I mean, it is a trend, um, is that when there's more than one survivor coming forward, it's a conspiracy theory, which is interesting, um, which is very interesting. 
And I like to say that survivors inspire, they don't conspire. Um, and to not get it twisted out there, to at least give survivors the chance of um, being seen as inspiration, um, as being seen as something that has been inspiring other survivors to come forward um, and not be painted um, by, by paid individuals, right, in these situations, um, to be seen as, as, as conspirers, like b- to be seen as creating this conspiracy um, theory, theory, at least give them the chance um, um, to be inspirational, right? Because it, it takes so much to, to come forward. And I think it's really, really important for us to listen to the survivors' words um, and, and see their bravery first and foremost. Um, and yeah, and it's just like very sad because I experienced though the, why are you the only one, you know? Oh, is, is Milo still coming behind me? Oh my God, this is kind of, s- okay guys, hold on one second. I'm back. Um, sorry, my uh, my abuser um, was was falling down there <laughs> um, behind me as I'm speaking about this. A um, little bit spooky. So, you know, I, I do want to remind everyone from a survivor's point of view, because we hear a lot about survivors through these lawyers, right? Through these lawyers that are paid by these um, alleged predators. Um, and just remember, they are paid, right? They're paid to defend um, their client, which that is what it is. Um, and so to be mindful of that and to be aware of that and just to know that from a survivor's point of view, from a survivor's opinion, you know, I have seen time and time again that, you know, survivors are inspiring other survivors to come forward, um, to speak their truth, to tell their story. Um, and it is really becoming a trend, really becoming a trend, um, this whole conspiracy thing. And so we can hear we can hear that point of view. Um, and we can also have um, give give a chance to another point of view um, of of seeing them as inspiration, right? Um, inspirational. So yeah. So anyways, Russell Brand, I guess Nick Carter, um, similar um, similar defense here, right? So where were we? Um, blah blah blah. Okay. Um, adding to the legal drama, which is not drama, it's trauma. Carter has sued Ruth and Schumann, alleging conspiracy. Since November 2017, Carter has become the target, this is quote unquote, of a small opportunistic group of conspirators engaged in a harassing, defamatory, and otherwise tortious, (laughs) I don't even know this legal language, um, campaign to ruin his reputation for the purpose of advancing their own agendas. Carter's counterclaim alleges the effect of this group's unlawful conduct and continued harassment has taken an immense toll on Carter, his family, and his band. Oh, his band, too. Um, Both emotionally and financially. Okay. Heard heard that also um, before from lawyers. Seems to be the go-to, which I'm just um, acknowledging that. So who is A.R.? A.R., the woman identified in court papers as A.R., claimed that Carter S.A.'d her starting in August 2003. When he was approximately 23 years old, A.R. claimed that she, along with Carter's friends and family, were on his yacht in a marathon, Florida. She alleges that Carter brought her to the yacht's cabin and got her drunk. Carter kissed, quote-unquote, 
AR, and shortly thereafter, he engaged in O and V S. Carter knowingly engaged in these and other S A acts with the then minor AR without her consent. Court papers charge Carter allegedly told AR to keep the encounter a secret. Just letting you know, people know. I don't know if anyone's seen my video about Brandon Quinn. Right, we saw it in real time. Brandon Quinn. At, I mean, this is we're just doing our own research here, right? So we're taking what the information from the other side is saying, and then we're we're cross referencing it to past scenarios so that we can get a full clear picture, so we can make informed decisions before we come up with an opinion, right? That's that is the most important thing here is that we get everything and we make a very informed decision, informed opinion. Um, And Brandon Quinn in real time was telling this minor, this 15 year old girl, um, allegedly to a uh, delete the conversation thread, right, to to hide it, to not show it. And so I saw an actual proof of this, that this does happen. I know with my abuser as well, he wanted to keep it a secret when I was younger. Um, And so, you know, these things happen. I'm just saying. These things do happen in other situations. So moving forward. Um, Several days later, A.R. alleges Carter encouraged her to meet him on the tour bus of his Florida property. On the bus, A.R. alleges in court papers, he coerced her into performing O.S. A.R. claimed that there was yet another incident. Oh, hi, Dawn. Welcome to the dinner party. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, She said in court papers that Carter goaded three other men to watch him having S. This is horrible with AR from a window. Well, okay. So remember, I got, sorry, I got to stop one more time though. Um, we were talking about the other day, remember, um, survivors, right? Uh, very, very specific allegations. Usually, you know, very, very, um, in detail, you almost see it. You almost feel it. You, you, it's usually, usually, um, a lot of detail, very specific, Um, And here we are again with a very specific detail about this window scenario, right? Um, To me, you know, each survivor really has their own story. Um, Some things can have cross references because alleged predators can act similarly. Um, But usually there's these details, right, to each survivor's story that makes it so um, human and um, uh, understandable. And then when we hear, though, through through these lawyers, it's the same recycled response almost, the same, like, lawyer language, right? But with survivors, they do have these um, little details. So I just want to say, like, that's something I just noticed right here. Um, as a survivor, in my opinion, um, the window thing, very specific. AR, who was intoxicated, made repeated refusals and requests for him to stop to no avail. AR claims that Carter infected her with HPV and that she and her mother reported the alleged incidents incidents to police in York County. Oh, Pennsylvania. So there's a police report about this in December 2003. Wow. What a brave um, human being there, because I mean, 2003 was like the height of fucking, you know what? The patriarchy, like power dynamics. Who the fuck goes to the police about anything that happened to you? I I was too afraid to go to the police about things that happened to me. So like that is, you know, when you go to the police, you go to the police. Like that's, I was always like, there's a fear around going to the police. You know, it becomes very, very real and you have to really face a lot of it. And they're asking you all these questions and it's like re-traumatizing. And so that is striking to me. There's a police report in 2003. And remember, these these lawyers a long time ago or in general are like, why didn't you go to the police? Yada, yada, yada. You just want his money. Yada, yada, yada. Remember, when you're going to the police, this is a criminal thing. It's not about money, right? I'm just I'm just letting everybody know, like criminal is criminal. Civil has to do. Unfortunately, when you're past the statute, it has to do with um, damages. So what, what, what are the damages to this person? Um, and then the defendant um, has to, you know, meet the criteria for um, those damages. So it's different. But criminal is criminal. You know, it's a sentencing. It's a whole other spiel. Um, so, wow, I'm, I didn't know this. And so I'm, ver- I'm reading this with you guys. This is pretty fucking crazy. Um, wow. 
Okay, so 2003, AR is claiming SB, intentional infliction of emotional distress. So, like, it seems like now it's her last, like, she went to the police. What happened with the police report? We all know. Good luck with the police, right, as a survivor. Um, AR is claiming sexual SB, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and negligent infliction of emotional distress in her suit. This case illustrates how much time, courage, and preservation um, perseverance it takes for victims and survivors to come forward about child sa and seek justice yeah margaret maybe an attorney with marsh law firm representing ar said in a statement announcing the lawsuit despite numerous complaints about carter's past conduct towards young women his victims continue to struggle to hold Nick Carter publicly accountable for his harms against them. We hope that AR receives some measure of justice and that this lawsuit will pave the way for other survivors to hold their abusers to account. Understandable. Very, also more descriptive, <laughs> um, when you hear even the um, uh, survivors, you know, um, lawyers. So what is Melissa Schumann's allegation? According to Schumann's lawsuit filed in Los Angeles, she and Carter worked together as cast members of the teen horror film The Hollow in early 2003, around the same time. Prior to working on this film, the two had interacted before and Schumann's managers encountered her to date Carter after he remarked that she was cute quote unquote. Schumann and Carter had a phone conversation and she told her managers that she wasn't interested, court papers claim. On set one, on set one day, Carter invited Schumann over to his apartment to hang out and play video games. I'm sorry, bro. Um, who? I mean, I'm sure that people who also want to play, I'm not really a big video game person, so it's just kind of interesting. It feels like kind of high. How old was he at the time? Hang out and play video games. Was he in his 20s or how old was he at this time? Schumann and a friend went to his Santa Monica apartment. When they got there, he and a male friend invited them to go to the liquor store with them. They got back to his apartment and Carter started making drinks. Carter allegedly asked Schumann if she wanted to hear some of his new music. Wow. It's, wow. Wow. I have to stop this for a second because I just had a triggering like flashback a little bit. My um, abuser did the same thing. It was always about his music. Um... And showing it to me, even right before the the, the physical um, assault happened. Um, yeah, yeah, he um, gave me um, headphones to listen to 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 his music um, before, and it was like to like let my guards down. I think like when I think back at it, I can't even speak about it right now. I'm like it's a little bit triggering. I'm just gonna continue here. Um, okay. um, Carter Schumann lunges letter into his office. He pulled her against him and started kissing her at 18 years old. Plaintiff felt self-conscious, intimidated and s inexperienced. She had only ever kissed one other boy. Defendant Carter knew that she was a V and that she held to religious conservative Christian values. The suit alleges Carter then brought her into the bathroom and force OS on her horrible um in my opinion here the suit alleges carter ultimately brought her into another bathroom and then a bedroom where he forced himself on her again and again plaintiff said no she told him over and over that she was a v and that she was saving herself for her future husband and that she did not want to have s the suit alleges defendant carter continued to force himself on her whispering in her ear that he could be her husband plaintiff could not get away from him he was too heavy trigger warning trigger warning trigger warning everyone right now because i'm feeling it um schumann said that she told multiple people about the alleged incident including her talent manager her mother her father her therapist a former co-star and others about defendant carter's essays she also alleges that carter gave her hpv Wow. So I didn't know I didn't know this um, thing that's happening here with the with with the HPV. So all of them have HPV here. Um, um, and Nick Carter seems to be the alleged through line. Right. Um, and started to manipulate and torment her after the alleged incident. Next person. 
These seem all very specific. Um, how, how is the chat feeling about this? I just want to check in with the chat. H how is everyone feeling about um, these allegations so far? Yeah, this is pretty... And these are very specific, right? Um, it's very specific details um, for each of them. Correct. Yes, HPV means more chance of ovarian cancer. Correct, Becca. Yes. And so, yeah. It's pretty... Okay. Now, this is Shay. I don't know if anyone knows um, or seen Shay's... Um, public claims and statements pretty heartbreaking to witness i can't play it because there's things that i'm not allowed to put on youtube um but i do recommend if you have um the the heart for it like to be able to get through with your triggers it's 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 pretty heartbreaking to watch so so shay shay um, in December, Ruth accused Carter of SAing her on his tour bus following a Tacoma, Washington concert in 2001. She made these allegations during a December 8th press conference. She was 17 at the time of the alleged assault. On the bus, she alleges Carter gave her a funny tasting beverage that he called VIP juice. VIP juice? Okay, these are like one of those details, you know, which I'm sure, you know, if I was like a lawyer, like defending, you know, someone with these allegations, this would be a little bit frustrating because it's like very, like very specific who I've never even heard the such thing as VIP juice. Has anyone else heard VIP juice? I've never heard that term before in my life. Is that actually a common thing that I'm just missing on? <laughs> like who? Why? What, like, wh VIP juice, dude. That also is pretty lame. Like, who the... F if anyone ever... You know, I don't know. It's pretty lame. VIP juice, dude. Like, VIP juice. I've never had any dude offer me personally VIP juice, so that's a very specific allegation. Um, Because I don't just see dudes throwing that around, by the way. Dudes don't just go like, <laughs> VIP juice. Very specific. Yeah, hell nah. I agree. Like, what? VIP juice is their MVP juice as well. Yeah. It's just like really, really weird. Okay. That's very specific. VIP juice. I'm just saying because I've never heard it before. Attorney Mark um, Boscovich claimed he then led her into the bus bathroom and instructed her to get on her knees. And then he blank, blank, blank his pants and exposed blank 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 ordering Shay to perform s acts on him ruth who didn't have any um s experience cried i cried too Shay. i cried too just saying i i cried too and he and he continued she alleges that carter arred her on the bed of the tour bus the last 21 years have been filled with pain, confusion, frustration, shame, and self-harm that are a direct result of Nick Carter arring me. Ruth remarked at the press conference, even though I'm autistic with cerebral palsy, I believe. Now, this is what she said at a press conference. You know, remember, these people are a lot, you know, he's behind this lawyer here. Here's Ruth's own words. Here's Shay's own words here. Even though I'm autistic with cerebral palsy, I believe that nothing has affected me more or had a more lasting impact on my life than what Nick Carter did and said to me. Ruth claimed that after the alleged R, I remember him calling me an R bitch. I'm not even saying that word. If you guys want to see what I'm highlighting here, you can. It's, it's disturbing. And grabbing me and leaving bruises on my arm. Okay. Whew. Okay. How has Carter responded to the allegations? Carter denies wrongdoing and frames some of the claims as part of a sprawling conspiracy against him. With AR 
Hayes claims that police listened to and thoroughly investigated her allegations at the time she brought them and told her that they were meritless. You know what, though? I'm sorry. You know what, though? A lot of survivors get their um, their police reports thrown away. You know what happened with the Danny Masterson case? I mean, if I remember correctly, they couldn't find it, right? There's so many things that happen with, with, these, with these police, like, with the police. I mean, survivors, so, I mean, the misogyny alone when it comes to it, I'm just saying, like, I hear that, and though I can't help but say a lot of my friends who, I, I, me, myself, with tons of evidence, friends of mine with actual evidence have been, had their cases Either they ghosted on them, they're thrown away, they can't find them, they're meritless, they're not enough, the statue passed, yada, you know, the list fucking goes on. The list goes on and goes on and gone and on and on and on. And so, you know, first it's why didn't you make a police report? And then the police report gets made and nothing happens. And then she's having to move forward. What? That was in two. So AR, what was that? 2004, 2003. Now it's 2023. So this many years later, when, when I'm pretty, I don't know what the statute is, now comes forward about her allegations against him. And it's like, that's a huge time frame from the police report, right? I think with her parents. Fast forward to, you know, and I'm just saying like, We've seen with the LAPD with, um, was it Les Mundes, um, how the LAPD was allegedly um, taking money or letting, you know, the alleged predator know about these claims before they were coming through. I mean, there has been so much shady shit, okay, that happens with the police in general. This is just a reality. Just a reality. Misogyny, sexism, racism homophobia, transphobia, you know, you name it, police got it. And so do I trust the police with AR's report? No. From as a survivor, in my opinion, I don't. I don't. I more am noticing the fact that she made a police report against somebody who is as powerful as someone like Nick Carter, right? Because let's say her money, uh, you know, let's say Nick Carter is saying she's after, you know, money, whatever. Um, let's say that was like what the response was. Um, and the first thing that her and her family did when she was 15 or whatever was, uh, you know, make a civil suit. This family seemed to go to the police. And I just want to remind everybody that criminal and civil is very different. So you can't get mad at survivors for not going to the police. And then when they do, it's meritless. Because what I find interesting is I had evidence and my, you know, my situation, they ghosted me. And so I don't trust the police per se as a survivor. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people out there that don't have good experiences with the police. I just don't have a good experience with them. Even seeing the whole Scientology thing happen recently, I don't have good experiences with them. And so I'm just taking that into note because I do want to state that as a survivor and to validate, validate survivors out there that have been turned away from police um, or who have had their case, you know, they, they've ghosted them, et cetera. These are common tales of a survivor. And so, yeah, that's, um, that's where I'm ending it there because I have to. So Carter denies wrongdoings and frames whatever in, in false allegations. Where are we? Listened to and thoroughly investigated her allegations at the time she brought them and told her that they were meritless. Okay, got you. Per the mail, he also remarked that repeating the same fa false allegations in a new legal complaint doesn't make them any more true. But that's also not really fair, though, bro, whoever this lawyer is or ma'am, whatever, um, that's not really true, though, because um, the police, what the police say doesn't necessarily make it true, because police have been complicit in, in, in covering up for alleged predators, at least like the LAPD, for example, right, with the Les Mundes. Um, so 
that also doesn't make it any less true. Right? Like if we hear about this why these lawyer these lawyer comments are so interesting. It doesn't make it any less true though, okay, when we when we learn about the LAPD with Les Mundes. It doesn't make it any less true. But sure, you can make the argument, which they are, of you know, more true. So we'll give them that. There's 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 the debate, I guess. <laughs> So Carter has also gone on the legal attack against Schumann and Ruth. Before Schumann filed her lawsuit, Carter sued her on February 2nd, alleging that she conspired against him to extort money and gain fame. Oh, the fame card. I'm sorry, is there any survivors out there who wanted the fame of being known as somebody who has been ard? Really? It's like been used since the 80s. And um, I, I just like don't like it. Like at least these lawyers need to come up with something new when they're when they're defending these the, their clients. But this whole thing of like survivors want to get famous from being known as somebody who is ard, lose their job, their reputation, get harassment, online harassment, lose their family members. I mean, to me. I find that defamatory about survivors. I find that to be defamation on survivors because that's saying that survivors in general are when they come forward, that's what they're seeking. And so when these lawyers say these things, when they go to the police, right, the police are hearing these lawyers statements and then you get this victim coming in, going up against a huge, powerful figure and guess what the police are going to be thinking because they've been hearing this on repeat for so long. Um, and so I just find it dangerous wording. I find it defamatory to all, all survivors, because even when I came forward, that's the thing I get, you're attention-seeking, right? And it's like, attention-seeking what exactly? <laughs> attention, what, what am I seeking? I'm definitely not seeking this type of um, behavior, this backlash for for coming forward about my trauma. Hell no, guys, Sorry. So anyways here, um, um, where are we? So before Schumann filed her lawsuit, Carter sued her on February 2nd. He's also suing Ruth, alleging that she's part of this conspiracy. If this legal strategy sounds familiar, that's because it is. It's not uncommon for alleged SAS abusers to sue their accusers. Carter's reps did not respond to Vulture's request for comment. So remember, in a lot of states, you know, we're seeing NDAs in the situation be illegal um, and, and, and you're not allowed to do it. And so you're going to see a lot of more defamation cases. And now in the state of California, we passed that bill recently so that it's going to be a lot harder for these abusers to uh, sue for defamation, which is wonderful. Um, this is the state of California. Um, but this is usually, in my opinion, happens um, to a lot of survivors as a way to retaliate, also because they can't get people to sign NDAs anymore um, once a lawsuit has been filed. And so defamation is their only um, recourse. So moving on, have other members of the Backstreet Boys commented on the allegations? After Ruth came forward with allegations against Carter, band member AJ McLean said the Backstreet Boys were supportive of him. We all stand behind Nick and we all fully support him. He's doing as great as he can. Backstreet Boys couldn't be more solid. He's doing as great as he can. Okay, can I just um, read to you guys something? Because I know in the thumbnail we made it, uh, boys will be boys. In the Backstreet Boys uh, font. And I just want to read something. This is an incredible book that just came out called Survivor, Survival Takes a Wild Imagination. Really amazing poetry by a survivor. Um, so I can't recommend this enough. And also you can follow her on Instagram. Um, but she said this really great, great quote here. Um, Boys will be boys is short for these fuckers have no evolutionary possibility. And it's just so true. It's like constantly saying boys will be boys or he's doing as great as he can makes it almost as though there's like no possibility for him to do better than great. Like all of us are having to, you know, stand up to our shit 
et cetera. And it's like boys and men are just, you know, boys will be boys and men are just doing as great as they can. And I just find that offensive um, because like, what does that even mean? So what is as great as he can? What does that entail? What does that mean? I want to know more details. I don't like it personally. I don't like the response as great as he can. Yes, I can. I can totally um, highlight when I'm reading it. <sighs> okay, sorry. I just did not like that. Like, what does that even mean? Like, this is from a boy band, by the way. You guys are a boy band as great as he can. Um, anyways, did you guys use auto-tune? So, couldn't be more solid. I don't know what that means either. The Daily Mail quoted McLean as saying, this does appear to be true. The band's years-long DNA world tour wrapped in May 2023. In July, Carter announced a solo tour starting in October. What do Schumann and Ruth's lawyers say about Carter's lawsuit? Karen Menzi, who, you know, whatever. We've heard her before because she was my lawyer. Um... Um, Karen, one of Schumann's lawyers, pointed out that a judge's decision allowing Carter's lawsuit to go forward was just procedural and didn't mean anything about the merits of his case. Melissa Schumann has brought her allegations for essay. What did you say? Oh, shit. You're right. Sorry, guys. I'm not highlighting. Here's where I'm at. Her allegations for essay against Carter in a case in California. The merits of those allegations will be decided in the case in California. Barth Menzies said this so-called counterclaim that Carter brought does not address Melissa's SA claims. He is raising conspiracy claims against her based on his position that Melissa got other survivors to bring lawsuits against him to extort money. As for comment, Boschkovitz compared the Carter allegations to the recent Danny Masterson case. No one with fame and money is above the law. We look forward to the truth coming out, the jury hearing all the facts, and rendering a favorable verdict. All right. So these are all the brave survivors that have come forward against Nick Carter. Um, I'm going to be going through a little bit more about Nick Carter because... Um, I found some things. There has been some connecting of the dots of things. And so um, I first want to check in with um, um, everybody here. How is everyone feeling about the survivors of Nick Carter? Do you feel um, like how do you feel about the allegations? Do you feel there you, you need more to be said? Um, how do you feel about the lawyers uh, uh, statements, et cetera? Um, it's not the real. It's not the real them you love. It's a highly curated version of a person. Totally. Don't feel bad. The perpetrators are the ones to blame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Felicia Aaron spoke in support of the survivors. I mean, I'm supporting these survivors as a survivor because it's very important to. Um, and it's a my First Amendment right to have my own opinion. Um, I'm supporting survivors because I want the language also around the world um, to start letting survivors out there feel supported. Because that's first and foremost as a human. You just want them to feel supported. Um, and then you go, you, there goes the case, the civil suit, etc. You know, but you want them to feel supported. You want them to feel that it's safe to come forward about their trauma. It's super important. So, you know, moving on. So um, apparently when it came to Sloan, there's a whole bunch that happened here Um which, you know, definitely check out Sloan's video about Nick Carter. And, you know, Sloan basically stated and showed emails alleging that Nick Carter's security was, like, looking for his address, asking for Sloan's address, and alleging that he that they sent him, like, a virus, like, hacking link, which was crazy. Um, some very shady things happened after Sloan um, made his video about Nick Carter. And so I'm curious if Nick Carter's security is going to be hitting me up asking for my address because it seems very interesting. It wasn't the lawyer asking, I think, if I remember correctly about the address, but it was Nick Carter's security and sending a link that if you Googled it, it actually had, um, spyware on it. So, so yeah, so that's another thing. Definitely watch Sloan's thing. And also if Miko, if you see it in the comment, if you can put it in the comment section, that would be super rad if you can um, find Sloan's link and just let people know that they can go and check it out. 
So moving on here, I do want to say that I that I protested Sony and I, I I protested on behalf of the survivors within Sony and then also the survivors out there that had um, Sony representing um, their accusers. Um, someone like Diplo is uh, with Sony, Nick Carter, R. Kelly. They got quite the lineup. So we got Nick Carter. Oh, and Dr. Luke as well um, with Kesha. And um, yeah, and so I protested Sony. You guys can find it um, on my Instagram. Here it is really quickly. I'll show you guys. You guys can see it. So it's this. It's E Predators is at Sony Music. I walk through the whole thing. Um, I can't fast forward on my computer for some reason, which is such a bummer. But yeah. And so again, I wanted to show this. Russell Brand wants to be the victim of a conspiracy. And we, you know, we just read Nick Carter's uh, defense. And the defense is very similar to someone like Russell um, like Russell Brand. And if I remember correctly, actually, wait, let's go back here. I do remember something about, whoop, where'd you go? Okay, wait, I want to see, <laughs> I want to see something here. Me too. Here. Oh, look, 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 look. How crazy is this, you guys? Wait, check this out. Check this out. So it says the counterclaim describes the counter defendants as opportunists who disgracefully attempted to exploit the Me Too movement. Remember how pissed I got about this the other day where I was just pissed at the fact that they're trying to take our, our, our survivors movement away from us. That now it's becoming just a hashtag and it's something that survivors are just using to what? I still don't get really what, um, but that's like also the new thing with lawyers. But who does it remind you of? It's another video that we that I did recently, which was here. Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman, Elfman said the same thing. When faced with threats from the other party to go public with untruths at the height of the hashtag Me Too movement, Elfman faced the impossible choice between settling and continuing his career and earning a living for his family, alleged dad, yada, 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 yada. Um, and so here's Me Too movement used again against the survivor coming forward. The Me Too movement was supposed to be used to uplift survivors. Me Too movement was to uplift survivors. And now we got alleged predators using it to like tarnish us, which is wild to me. Wild. And it's all the same jargon. This is why I'm trying to say like they like to say survivors all are saying the same thing and there's a conspiracy. So then does that mean there's a conspiracy with all these lawyers? Is there a conspiracy with all these alleged lawyers out there? I'm just asking a question because all of these lawyers have similar things they keep saying, right? Almost verbatim. Similar responses. So do the if they're going to use that analogy for survivors, my response to these lawyers is, does that mean all of you lawyers are in a conspiracy against us survivors? Feel free. Hit me up. I would love to hear your response. Um, I'm sure you can find me with your PIs. Um, probably know where I live, know my phone number. Um, so why don't you hit me up and, and, and let me know about that? Because if survivors are being called um, these con the, being part of a conspiracy theory, right? Because what? They all have the same accuser and the stories are similar. Well, when I look at all these lawyers' responses, um, I'm sorry, you guys, but it seems like a conspiracy theory against survivors, to conspire and make survivors look as if they're liars, that they're using the Me Too movement to their advantage, that they're trying to like ruin people's careers, that they're these liars, yada, yada, yada. And so this is my opinion. They're allowed to their opinion. This is my opinion. They're allowed to think that we're conspiring and doing X, Y, and Z. Well, use the same fucking um, whatever, <laughs> same thought process and apply it to yourself. Lawyer boys, apply it to yourself. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying because it's the same shit. Like literally, look at this, guys. It's the same shit. Here's Me Too movement. The representative also claimed that the initial settlement was a reaction to the hashtag Me Too movement. It's the same stuff over and over and over again. So I'm just saying, since they're all saying the same shit, 
that's just my um that's my re- that's my response that's what i think um that's how i feel um and so anyways moving on i do want to mention the whole paris hilton thing now does anyone remember um paris hilton and nick carter dated allegedly Lawyers who defend abusers, some of us are also survivors. They're using the Darvo effect on survivors. There is definitely a Darvo effect happening. So so getting into Paris Hilton here. Um, I guess Nick Carter and Paris Hilton were dating around this time. And Paris Hilton looks, I mean, she looks clearly beat up there. She also had... Um, these bruises here and then here's even in an article it has Paris Hilton next to Nick Carter I think Paris just wants to be alone right now says her sister Nikki above um so something going on here I'm not really sure um all the details about this but what's very interesting about it does anyone remember Mart good old Marty Singer good old lawyer Marty Singer, tough bulldog, um, Hollywood uh, um, lawyer um, who likes to uh, defend a lot of the alleged predators. He um, represented Bill Cosby. He represented um, Danny Masterson. Um, He represents a lot of alleged predators. Um, He also represented Jonah Hill when I came forward about my story when I was 15 or 16 years old, um, which we'll get into in a second. But Marty Singer, which was so wild about this, he represented Nick Carter during this time when people were saying maybe that Nick Carter is the one who, who harmed Paris Hilton, right? Josh, it baffles me that SA predators get off scotch-free, yet a DRUG user and someone who evades taxes gets put away for a long time. Our system is corrupt. I mean, it is wild. It's like someone could, you know, back in the day, just have WEED, right? And then they're going to jail for sometimes like the craziest amount of time. And then a, a predator gets no jail time. I agree with you, Josh. And thank you for saying that. It is very true. It is very, very, very true. Um, so here's Paris Hilton. Here's her bruises. You can see them to the left of, on her arm. Um, you can also see them on her right arm. Um, but what was mo- most noticeable to me was her mouth. And I'm, I'm going to state her mouth because we're going to talk about what Marty Singer, lawyer of Nick Carter, said about these marks and that they had something to do with Nick Carter. So let's get into this because let's digest this because I found it very interesting what he ended up saying. So here's Paris Hilton. Now, here she is with her sister. Now, going into here. So here's Marty Singer. Carter's attorney, Marty Singer, said his client did meet up with his ex-girlfriend and that she even went home with him, which is weird which is interesting. So they were together that night. But Singer claims Hilton is upset about what Carter said to People magazine and could be seeking, could be seeking retaliation by spreading rumors. Singer, Singer, (laughs) who represented Danny Masterson, said the bruises were caused during an S&M photo shoot. Now, this is where it gets fucking crazy, you guys. This is where I had to go look it up and find out, you know, what was what. Um, S&M photo shoot for Rolling Stone magazine by a band or a strap around her arm that was too tight. To claim abuse, he said, would be false and defamatory. And he falls to the post of shoddy reporting. Singer also represents Britney Spears in her fight with the New York tabloids. So, like, this is this is Marty Singer in a nutshell. He, like, he represents so many different people in Hollywood. Um... He's a lawyer of Hollywood, and he even represented Britney Spears here, right? And then he represents Danny Masterson, and then he represents Bill Cosby, and then he represents Jonah Hill, and then he represents Lizzo, and then he, you know, and the list goes on. Britney Spears was your coolest client singer. 
I'm just saying Britney Spears, lucky to, you know, be representing Britney Spears um, in her New York tabloid, which printed a photo of her drinking ginseng and called it booze. Poor Britney. That's fucking awful, by the way. So here we got Marty Singer He's talking about this S&M photo shoot. And so I had to look it up because I was like, um, wait a minute. What is this S&M? Um, I want to know what it is. Show me it. Show me it. Show me it. So here we go. Here is the image of, of Paris Hilton. And what I find interesting about this. So he talked about her, her arms, right? And it's like, first of all, it doesn't look tight at all. There, I, I don't see that. I, otherwise, wouldn't she also have to sue, like sue, um, what was it? I think it was Rolling Stone, by the way, who did this, um, photo shoot I'm pretty positive it was Rolling Stone um wouldn't she like sue Rolling Stone or like speak out about like how injured she got at Rolling Stone's photo shoot but the number one thing that I saw here was I don't see anything on her lip so so he's acknowledging right he's acknowledging the arms and I still don't that looks like handprints that's that looks like if someone grabbed your hand like this is also the palm right here it just looks like a human grab up and down even the finger like it looks like a human grab but what I found regardless of that what I found really interesting is her lip her lip is busted does anyone else see that did the photographer bust her lip at the photo shoots you know what I mean like her lip is busted Right. Yeah. And heiress. Yeah. Like what Paris Hilton's trying to what her too. She wants the fame and money too. It's ridiculous. And I don't even know what's going. I, this is just something I found recently. And I'm very curious about this because Paris Hilton dated Nick Carter. She was, I guess, allegedly there with him this evening or the evening before. Um, she has these marks on her. She looks like she she knows paparazzi follows her. And so it's interesting that she went public with these bruises. Like, I just find it very interesting that she went public with these bruises, but Marty Singer didn't seem to acknowledge her mouth. There's, I found all the imagery. The imagery, there's nothing from what I found to do with her mouth. And so, just saying, um, and just to remind you about who Marty Singer is, um, he was part of the Danny Masterson NDA. It's this guy, um, you know... Look him up. Look up the NDA when it comes to Danny Masterson. Very, very upsetting. But also here, this is what he said about me. <laughs> and I actually responded to Marty Singer because I like to talk to these lawyers directly because a lot of their clients like to hide behind them and they pay them a bunch of money um, to like say all their things, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for me personally, you know, I like to actually talk directly um, to these people because it's human to human. At least I like to think so. <laughs> um, and so... When I came forward about Jonah Hill, he said this about me, that the actress accusations were a complete fabrication. Nicholas, the lawyer, also said is demonstrate demon oh demonstrably Demon I forgot how the word goes. I looked it up and I was like, oh, OK, like it means like literally totally false, um, unreliable. It never happened. Singer told the outlet, adding that the allegation in question is based on a source who's unreliable. Your source, Singer said, this is I'm the source. <laughs> Um, good old Alexa Nicholas. Uh, your source is a serial accuser. <laughs> I called me a serial accuser while his clients are like serially, they're accused of R multiple times. And he has the nerve to say your source is a serial accuser who has made assorted accusations against multiple men in the entertainment industry, which I have because there's multiple predators in the entertainment industry. By the way, singer, don't you have a long list of them that you represent allegedly? That includes a claim she made for S.A. against her ex-husband that she later voluntarily withdrew after she got some media attention. First of all, it's not true. Literally, what ended up happening is a long story that I explained in 70 pages on my Instagram about the legal system that you can definitely check out. It's called Proclaim Liberty, and I put everything there that you can go ahead and read. Um, I, and Marty Singer obviously did not do his research before saying any of this, which... 
sorry, Marty, but you're a lawyer, but you're definitely not uh, a journalist uh, per se. And so I responded to Marty Singer and said this, which I just think is fun to know. Singer called Nicholas, so unreliable, source and a serial accuser who has made assorted accusations against multiple men in the entertainment industry. I lulled him saying, Marty Singer, let's put that quote on a banner in front of your office tool. Wait, this guy is the lawyer. I this is like I was figuring this out in real time. Um, wait, this guy is the lawyer for Bill Cosby. Okay, so you bully alleged serial accusers, but defend alleged serial abusers. What law school did you even go to? Absolutely ridiculous and embarrassing for you. With your paid for logic, Marty Singer, then Bill Cosby pleading innocent would be technically unreliable, wouldn't it? since he seems to be a serial denier. And so I just want to say for all the survivors out there that are survivors of multiple predators, um, which sadly does happen for a lot of survivors. Um, It's not just one um, predator, not one perpetrator, right? Um, I respond to Marty Singer in in the way that I thought was proper, Letting people know that a man, for example, a powerful man, is able to be seen as innocent, even though he has multiple accusations against him for crimes. But if a survivor has had it happen to to them multiple times, what, we're less credible? So if you're going to use that same thought process, then you have to apply it. You have to apply it to the alleged predators. And that's just my opinion. You know, like if you're going to be applying this to survivors, you got to apply it to your clients, Marty, who have been accused multiple times, serial, serial accusations (laughs) against them. Right. So you see, it's interesting how these lawyers work. You know, they try to make you feel triggered. That's in my opinion, that's what Marty Singer first made me feel like he was wanting to shame me about what has happened to me and Marty Singer, you will never be able to do it. Um, Maybe for half a second, you made me feel very sad. Um, But the more I looked into you, the less I was sad and realized that you, in my opinion, um, kind of gross. So whatever. So your logic, I could apply it back to your, to your client list as well, Marty. And so I think it's important for us when we're we're hearing these these this language that's coming from lawyers specifically and not even from um, the defendant. Right. Not even from the person who's being accused of this. We're hearing all this language from these lawyers to keep in mind these lawyers. Are paid to defend their clients, which is they have the right to do that. The people being accused have the right to defense. Right. But to keep that at least in mind so that when you're hearing the legal language shit, that we're at least not just taking it at face value, that we're looking into it, that we're actually doing our own investigation, that we're listening to the survivor's brave words, that we're feeling how it makes us feel versus how the lawyer's words makes us feel. Um, And just just doing, I don't know, like. A, a citizen duty, right? So that we're not just right away going out there and um, listening to whatever the lawyer who is paid to defend this person is saying. That's just my personal opinion, especially when we keep seeing the same comments over and over and over and over again. I would like to encourage everyone out there to to make informed opinions. Make informed opinions and understand how the media rolls understand the power dynamics, understand how lawyers work for both sides, right? Um, And to at least understand the dynamics and to before you make a comment publicly about it, that you're keeping in mind that survivors everywhere are listening. There might be other survivors that have allegations against Nick Carter who haven't um, um, come forward about their allegations, right? And they're kind of looking at how the public is engaging engaging with the survivors who did come forward with allegations. And so let's please be mindful about how we communicate, especially when it comes to online discourse, because it spreads everywhere and survivors get super triggered, even when it's not their own abuser. 
even when it's not their own abuser. Even when it's not their own abuser. So, you know, that's how I'm... Uh, hi, is it Mila or Mila? Mila? Mila, welcome to the to the munchies. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and so I just... It's like why this platform is really important to me because I didn't have this when I was going through my litigation battle. Like, I didn't have this. I didn't have this um, where someone could, like, at least give me a little bit of their wisdom or, like, tell me a little bit of this and that. And, like, I didn't have it. And then I was like, well, I'm going to make it. Um, and so my intention here is for any survivor out there listening, survivor, um, with allegations against Nick Carter or not, you know, um, that you do have a support system. And I at least want the channel to show that. Look how many people, um, you know, even though it's not like we don't think it's much sometimes, but there are so many people watching and listening and supporting. And I want people to, I want survivors to, to realize that. And so, you know, that's where I'm at. I actually wanted to recommend a book. It's called Only Words by Catherine McKinnon. And I'm just going to read one um, paragraph before um, I do a wrap up. And I think it's really important. Um, a few words that she said here about um, defamation and discrimination against um, women specifically. Um, but she goes, putting to one side what this progression from life to law does to one's sense of reality, personal security, and place in the community, not to mention faith in the legal system, Consider what it does to one's relation to expression, to language, speech, the world of thought and communication. You learn that language does not belong to you, that you cannot use it to say what you know, that knowledge is not what you learn from your life, that information is not made out of your experience. You learn that thinking about what happened to you does not count as thinking, but doing it apparently does. You learn that your reality subsists somewhere beneath the socially real, totally exposed, but invisible, screaming yet inaudible, thought about incessantly yet unthinkable, expression yet inexpressible, beyond words. You learn that speech is not what you say, but what your abusers do to you. And she says here, I am asking you to imagine that women's reality is real. And I want to end this video by asking everybody, I am asking you to imagine that survivor's reality is real. Um, so a really great book by a, by a lawyer. Um, I, 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 I highly, 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 highly recommend it. Um, it's just incredible, really, really interesting, um, read. And it was very inspiring for me as a survivor, um, and extremely informative about the law, um, as well. And so it's time for survivors to feel that they do have the language that they, that they are able to express what happened to them and that their reality is real. Um, and so... That was um, another, um, yeah, another episode of Eat Predators Daily. Um, I do want to also say a, a really amazing survivor made this cute, cute kids book. Um, it's her, her name is Lexi Coster, and she sent this to Nova. Um, it's called My Body Safety Book, and it's a book to teach kids about consent. Um, and she's a survivor herself. And so I do want to say if you have a kid out there, um, Nova loves this book. She keeps picking it up and reading it and pointing at it. Um, so if you have a kid, um, I love this book. And so I can't recommend it more. We want to always support survivors on this channel. And I love this book. And so if you're a mom out there and want to teach your kids about consent um, in, a, in, in a way that they're going to understand at a young age, please, please check it out. It's called My Body Safety. And uh, per usual, you guys are the best. And um, you guys mean the world to me. Um, take care of yourselves tonight. I'm going to be taking care of my, myself tonight because tomorrow is the Kesha video, the open letter. And um, I'm obviously a little bit nervous. So um, it's going to be nice to see, see you all there tomorrow um, and have your support while I, go, <laughs> while I go through this. 
you guys are the best thank you so 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 much um and i will i will see you tomorrow at 3 30 power to survivors you guys